Marketing Motion Graphics video tutorial. My name is Jesse and today I'm going to go over using the um, video clips, animations, and pre-keyed effects um, from Marketing Motion Graphics in iMovie. So currently I'm using iMovie 11. Um, the same principles apply to iMovie 10, um, I'm sure 9, and if you keep going back, I don't know how many people are still using further versions away, you know, you might as well upgrade your operating system. Um, and there's also, this is just a standard layout that I have here. And I've already imported a whole bunch of different video clips from marketingmotiongraphics.com. And the layout, I like to keep them down on the bottom. And then I put my video together up here. So this would be the timeline. Um, some of you can switch if you want the longer timeline down here, which actually makes much sense as well if you have longer videos. Um, it all depends. So I just wanted to mention that. Now, when importing into iMovie, you simply import movies. I'm just going File, Import Movies. Now you're going to get this window that opens up and you're going to want to choose your clips. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one that is pre-keyed. And you're going to see options down here. Now it's saying where it's going to save to. That's always will be your default hard drive or wherever you're working. So you want to make sure that optimized video is always off whenever you're importing anything that has the alpha transparency saved in the file, um, as in pre-keyed effects, um, uh, pre-keyed footage, chroma keyed footage, um, anything that says, you know, keep or holds alpha transparency. Alpha refers to the background, any kind of the area around. See, so it would be the black area here. So these light effects are kind of on their own layer. And so I'm just going to show you what I mean. I'll import that specific file and I'm going to put it over top of this uh, footage that I have here. So first off, I'm just going to take this piece of footage, drag it up in the timeline. So it's just a pan of, I believe it's Las Vegas. And then what we're going to do is drag that pre-keyed clip over top. Now, another thing, when you drag it over top, you see the little icon there, the, the plus symbol. When I release it, it's going to give me these options here. And so each option will do different things, side by side, um, cut away. But what we're looking for is picture in picture. Green screen and blue screen also get different effects too. You can play around with those. But in order to have it overlay over top, you want to go picture in picture. Another thing, in order to get those options, certain options, you also need to go to iMovie Preferences, Show Advanced Tools. You want that to be on. It'll give you some extra options. If you don't have that on, then when we go to drag a clip over top, doing the same thing with the plus symbol, Release, the options are no longer there. It's very limited, so it just allows you to replace it or insert it within the timeline as one single piece. So if you want to overlay things on top, now you can do this with anything. It doesn't have to be pre-keyed. It can be any piece of footage you want to drop over top of your clip or a graphic. But you want to make sure that's on. And it'll give you those options here that you're seeing. All these new options. So again, we're going to go picture in picture. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit. Oops, that's not right. So we can see the clip. I'm just going to extend it because it's a longer clip. And now it's only going to allow me to extend it the length of this piece of footage because they're paired together. So however long this is, I can make this the same length. And I won't be able to extend this because it's just a single piece of footage that's only you know so many seconds long. So what I can do, let's say I want to put this one behind it, and your clips may be you know, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, half an hour. So when you put something over top like this, you can see it up here in the window, it's pairing it to this uh, specific clip. And you'll be able to drag it and stretch it all the way, you know, the length of your timeline. Oops. Now in this case, this clip here is only 10 seconds long, so I can't stretch it any further. So what I need to do is bring it in again to Oops, to loop it. And now, because I'm kind of putting two pieces of footage here, I have to put it over top of this one. 
and go pitcher and pitcher. I can bring them close together. So what you can do, you want to get them as close as you can without having them go into each other. That's probably because if you look at it right now, it kind of the gap tightens up, and so now the clips are pretty much back to back. Now this clip is probably a bad example because it kind of flares on and flares off. But if you have a loop, a seamless loop, then you can you just pretty much will drag it into the other one until it touches, and it'll, and then you can just keep you know repeating it over and over again and bring in another one, bring in another one, and so they're back to back. I'm just going to delete that one for now and delete this footage. I'm going to slide this over top. Okay. So now we have the clip in here. Oops, I'm going to select it. What you want to do is drag it to the dimensions that you need. Now this one is, this clip is specifically 1280 by 720. So you can, you want to make sure it's at least that size. Um, you can, if, you're, if your canvas is smaller than that, then that's fine. Or if it's larger, then you can just kind of stretch it to fit. Now if you drag it too far, it disappears. So you want to stretch it just to cover the area. And so you can see the footage is showing up below. And that flare is just over top. And now, because we have two pieces of footage here in the timeline, we're still allowed to bring in more. Oops. And keep the timeline going, keep this layer, you know, attach another flare to the top of this if we wish. You can also add text over top. So when you think of it, you, you actually get three layers. You're going to have the bottom footage or graphic or image. You can layer um, a, P, a graphic or pre-keyed footage over top of the actual footage. So if I wanted to bring in just an image, <clears throat> I could, whoops, I could actually bring in an image here from iPhoto or something. or can simply drag in your images right into the timeline. Now I, was, I recommend using a PNG if, if you don't want the white background. If I were bringing in just a JPEG, this white here is going to show up. The PNG, which is a portable network graphic, is just another format you can save, similar to say a GIF, so you have no background. I can drag it right into the timeline, and it's going to treat it just as a piece of footage, which you don't want to do. But you can drag it over top of other footage. Now if I drag it over this clip where we already have the lens flare attached, it's only going to let me replace it or insert. So you can only have the two on top of each other. But if I were to say have another clip that doesn't have anything above it attached, then we can take the PNG, drag it over top, again go picture in picture. Now we're going to end up with a problem here because it's treating it as as an image so when we click hover over it, the settings here are going to be different. We're going to have clip adjustments, video adjustments, cropping, Ken Burns, and rotation. Now Ken Burns effect is essentially what the motion is. See how it just kind of slowly rotates the image or pans the image. In order to change that you're going to see here, now I clicked on Ken Burns effect. You can crop, fit, that's the only part. It's kind of it's kind of cropping it out automatically, and it's sliding the image according to where the start is to where the end is. So if we do something like this, just for an example, when we go done, the start of the clip is going to be the start of the name, and it fades in by default, and it'll go all the way to the end and fade off, and it'll go as slow or as long as the clip is dragged. So if we again have a long just a, a background or piece of video or graphic then it'll pan across at that that time frame. See how slow that is? Because this is 19 seconds so it's going to take 19 seconds for it to get from the start to the finish. So say we want it to just be a still graphic. Let me go back to this. So we don't want this on. We don't want that at all. If we go fit hit done, it's going to fit the whole graphic now. We can resize it, but it's not cut out. It's on a black layer. You also notice this isn't the best quality. It's a very small web graphic, so it's a little blurry. So it's meant to be about that size. But we want to get rid of the black. There's no black in the PNG in the info. There's nothing there. So, I'm going to go back to the settings. 
if we hit crop and allow black, it'll allow everything. But then you'll see that it's filling in this information here because the graphic that I brought in is only 450, 450 pixels by 95 pixels high. But yet it's iMovie's automatically formatting it to fit the canvas. So this blank information here, or the black information, isn't really information. So for an example, if I, I'm opening it in Photoshop, if you open it in a preview editor, you won't be able to tell. It depends on the editor. It just it fills in gray because it's a PNG. But you'll see here, because that's the size of the graphic. So if I made this image the same dimensions as my uh, movie that I'm making, so let's say 1280 by 720, or say I'm making it 640 by 480. I'm just going to start a new graphic. Actually, here is a default 1280 by 720, 72 pixels. Anything you work with in video or web for that matter is always in 72 it's screen resolution. I'll just drag it in there. Now, see how much smaller it is. But now if I were to bring that in, this whole area, because it's now has the information, it's going to be empty, just like this here. And just the graphic will show. So what you want to do is make the image as big as possible. So when you bring it in, you get the best resolution that you can resize. Now that I kind of, I'm going to lose a bit of quality there, but just for this purpose, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to save this out. I'm just saving as PNG. Now another thing, sorry, before I save, I want to make sure that it's in RGB. If it's in CMYK color or, or lab color, maybe different ones, we'll, won't give you the option to, to export it as a PNG graphic. Um, so you always, And you always want to deal with RGB anyway when you're working with video. Um, all, most, you know, all monitors are RGB, which is red, green, and blue uh, colors. So I'm going to save this. Actually, I've already saved it out just onto my desktop here, so you can see logo. And so I'm, I'm just going to drag it in over top. I'm going to delete this. Drag this in over top. Picture in picture. And now it's cut off. Which is a little strange. Okay, it was just the way it was. Again, because it's got the Ken Burns effect, so see how it's zooming in and out. Okay, so we want to remove that because it's a new piece of footage. So I just go crop, or sorry, fit. And there's no black because the whole image is this size. I didn't make it a small little graphic. I made it the full width of my video, which is the best way to do things. So now the graphic is perfect proportion. And I can resize it as I need. And then you can add effects to it. You can go in here and go video adjustments or clip adjustments, change your colors, saturation and whatnot. Go to your clip. Here you can have it dissolve. Well, there's video effects if you want to add these to it as well. As well as having dissolve, zoom, or swap in a certain amount of seconds. So what that means is it's going to fade on for the length of the clip and then fade off. So if I go back to sort of clip adjustments, I have, it, I'm going to say this picture in picture effect. Uh, at none, it's just going to pop on, pop off. Again, we can drag this as long as we want. Again, you got to keep in mind it's still paired to this piece of footage. You'll see that little arrow there. So if you want it just as its own, then you just need to drag it in and have it on the timeline. Then it will be your background. I'm just so going to bring in a, a textured background from the textured background collection at marketingmotiongraphics.com. I'm just going to drag this one in. And by default, it should have the Ken Burns effect on it. So you'll see the Ken Burns 
effect is on there where it starts and ends. So it'll start here and zoom out. But it's moving pretty quick. You'll see here the clip is only 1.1 seconds long. So we want to edit that. So here duration and it can apply to all stills in the timeline. You can put this to how let's say we want it for 30 seconds. So it'll extend the clip to however long we want. And again, and then that animation will just slow down. So it'll keep zooming out so we can have our text over top, you can have your messages, other pre-keyed effects over top. All the while, this background is slowly moving, slowly zooming out. It's perfect for, for great stills, still images as you know, as kind of moving backgrounds. And you can, ex you know, ex extend that to however long you want. And again, that's in clip adjustments, duration. Now, by default, if you want to, if you, sorry, if you right click, go to project properties, and then you can set defaults for your projects. Initial photo placement, just have it to, you know, fit in frame automatically. And then your duration can automatically be 10 seconds by default if you want. Same with fade ins, fade out can be 10, 12, or sorry, I guess it only was up to 2. I'm going to cancel. Yeah, again, it won't, it doesn't have the fade on. So, what you want to do for that, if you want to have it, you know, fade from one into the next, you know, you'll have by default um, a whole bunch of different transitions. So, there's fade to white, there's cross blur, which would probably be a good one, cross dissolve that's probably as close as you're gonna get so you want to put it in between two pieces you'll get this little icon so they'll so they fade into each other now if you want you have settings on this you can go transition adjustments or precision editor the adjustments you can extend the duration of the fade to make it really long really quick so it's all by seconds right now it's at 0.5 seconds you can make it one second two seconds 0.25 seconds overlap half the clip let's see what that does that's not bad and then again once you have it on there you can just go through and test out other ones see that one's pretty cool it'll work perfect for the space Yeah, it's pretty quick though. So what we're gonna do? Let's make it one point. Actually, let's make it two seconds long. And then we want to edit it just a bit better, so there's a, it blends together a bit better. So what we're gonna do is go into the precision editor. Now I'm just again going to the settings. And what you can do is drag each piece of footage around as you need and then extend the transition. So see how the seconds are changing. 6 seconds, 7, 8, 9. We want it, oh that, sorry that's point seconds, we want it 2. So we're going to need to bring this into the other piece of footage a little bit more. And you can preview it in here as well, hitting spacebar. Sorry, it's just going to preview that clip. So now they're kind of overlapping. See that? See the gray, the gray area there, going from dark to light, is the transition of this clip on. So we're gonna go back. You just drag your cursor over it. You can see what it'll look like. Now another thing I want to bring up is when I'm just dragging my cursor over this, I can see the animation. I can see the pre-keyed or the, uh, the the PNG the effects. If I go to preview it, they're not showing up. Now, I'm not sure why that is. If you preview the movie in full screen, um, or when you render it out and export it, it will all show up fine. You shouldn't have any issues. And you can see here the transition is 2.2 seconds. So again, if you want to make that shorter, you can. So, now let's get into uh, importing actual pre-keyed animations on top of our footage. So I'm going to keep this background here, remove the transition. I'll keep the background, I'll let it, I'll keep it the way it is. 
And so I have this infographic that's pre-keyed from the infographics collection. Drag it over top, picture in picture, and just you just want to adjust it how you want it. So say this is the this is the start of our clip here, and it comes in. We have a logo come on top or our text intro, and we want the clip to start right here. That's where it will start, and it'll play the whole length. So it's 10 seconds long. So I just want to click on it and adjust it to the size I want. Now again, it might not. This clip might not work the best because these lines are blue. So actually, I'm going to bring in something else. We'll use this. It's from the same collection. Blow it up a bit. And it plays over top of the background. And then it fades off. So while that's playing the whole time, we want to have some information over here. So what you want to do is drag a text element on. With iMovie, you have to pick your style, whether you want just you know centered, still, lower thirds. You know some of them all animate on, animate off. As you can see when you hover over them. If you just want plain text, we're going to drag it, and you can drag it right over top of the pre-keyed clip. Oops, why is that? No, maybe not. Drag it over top of. Sorry, the actual footage. And it runs, it'll run over top of everything. Again, because these are paired together. So you want to drag it over this, the main footage. And this is paired to that, which is paired to the text. And the text, again, you can drag as long as you want it. So we want the text to appear right when the infographic comes on, like so. And then what you want to do, now you can't click and drag this around. So what you have to do is <clears throat> justify the text to the left, <clears throat> to the center, to the right, in order to fit your video. So in order to do that, you'll see at the top here it says show fonts. Click on that. Now, <clears throat> by default, it'll have the iMovie panel. So you're going to be limited to these few fonts. Now, if you want, you'll see down here system panel sorry, system font panel, which will bring up all your computer's fonts. And you can choose any font you want. Some of them don't work as well as others, just because of the styles will be, you know, dramatically different, so the animations or, or whatnot might not show up so well. Um, now you'll see here nothing's happening when I'm clicking. But here it does, because I'll show you, you have to highlight your text. So we want to change this. Show fonts system font panel and then now when I click hold on now when I click it'll change the text so I'm gonna go with Futura again you want to change the alignment so you can see now it's aligned to the left centered justified and so on you can also bold the text if you want and, uh, and add italicize and underlines outlines as well as your line spacing so I'm going to keep it pretty tight no underlined no, yeah, no outline and then you can also choose a color pick something rather bright I wonder, you can also sample from the actual uh, video if you wish. So say we want that pink. And then again, I want to change this. Oops. Show fonts. And I'll pick the same font, but I'm going to make it bold. Condensed, we'll go condensed, extra bold. And then again, you can just continue to edit your content here. 
and add lines and just keep <clears throat> just keep adding to it and so the text is going to pop on now it's going to by default fade on and fade off at the ends so if you want to change that again it's got a preset <clears throat> um, theme animation to it <clears throat> by clicking on you know centered lower third overlap now you can't just drag certain effects over top of text that's already there so if you want a different one see how these two are split because they kind of snap into each other you create a new text element have that fade off that comes in and then have your next pre-keyed animation so we'll go back actually this one might work it's a little pre-keyed lens flare and I want it to appear right when that fades off going to cover the screen there. right when that text fades off uh, maybe a little bit closer actually I'll adjust this perfect and then we want that to slide on so this doesn't look too bad and then time your text again with the end of the animation so you can have your title come on and it'll fade off at the time the flare goes off and then you, again you can bring in you know just motion backgrounds and just kind of do the same thing you might want to keep the same background obviously if you're going with a theme uh, a specific style but that's all you have to do is just kind of you stick with one main background whether it's a motion background loop um, or a still image or a piece of footage and then you add your text and add your, you know your pre-keyed effects infographics there's some arrows from the shapes collection you know here's some money from the cash collection they all work the same which means they you drag them in and place them in your uh, in your timeline Oops. according to uh, the video you're creating you just have to keep in mind that the clips are a specific length uh, unless they're, they're loops so some of these loops, the space loops uh, not that one but you know the cache loops a lot of the flares here are the backgrounds now apparently you can't copy and paste it as is you know pre-keyed because that's a, an action that you're manually doing I'm manually picking it up and dragging it on top as picture in picture so copying and pasting it is just gonna put it back in the timeline which we don't want so I'm just gonna undo I want to make sure they're touching. Now again, this clip, you're going to have to drag it and resize it. And it'll just keep continually looping. And you, you have to make sure that you have a piece of footage again extending the whole time because if I delete this, that cuts off right to the end of this clip. It won't keep playing because it's attached here. So if we again need to make this longer, go back into clip adjustments and extend the seconds. And then we can extend the pre-keyed clips on top. When you are working with multiple pre-keyed clips, like say we have the money here, but then I want to add the infographic on top. I want this to go with the money. It doesn't work that way, but there's a way around it. So if you plan your video out correctly and you know you want to have your background, I want to have this on top in certain areas in my text, but then I want to add another pre-keyed effect over top. 
you know, and then maybe something, and then maybe another one over top, but yet I'm stuck with one, two, three areas, and one of them being text. And so, if, say, even if I want to bring a graphic and have it over top, you know, you're limited in iMovie for that. So a trick around that is to render your video out in stages. So now that I say I have this, you know, the length that I want, I have have it built, you know, the first layer, we'll say, and my text on, but then I want to add some stuff on top. You render it out, import it back in, and so you're left with this whole content here is a completely flattened video file. Bring it in, and then again, you can repeat the process and add on another piece of pre keyed footage, add on even more text if you want, right? And then export it, and you can bring it back in, so you can get multiple layers by just rendering out your videos, bringing them in, add something, render it out, bring it in, add something. And as long as you keep in mind how you're doing this process, because, you know, you can't really go back to the very first step and make a change, and then, because you're going to have to do all your other changes all over again. So if you plan it carefully, um, you can end up with some, you know, some pretty unique videos um, just using, sim just simply using iMovie. So I want to thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more.